The Pico 4. It's not the Pico Neo 4. I kept calling it the Neo 4 in my first impressions video, but it is just the Pico 4, and it's officially releasing today, the 18th of October. My first impressions of this headset from my short demo at Gamescom were good, but now I've had a couple of weeks to play around with it at home to be able to give you my full review. I see some people calling this headset the Quest 2 killer, and I can tell you right now that's definitely not the case, and I'll explain why in more detail in this video. But first, I want to say thank you to Pico for sending out the Pico 4 early for this review, but as always, I'll give you my honest opinion on the experience. So, with that said and out of the way, let's kick off this video and let me show you what comes inside the box. So the Pico 4 comes in two models, the 128 gigabyte model, which is 429 euros, 379 British pounds, or the 256 gigabyte model, which is 499 euros, 449 British pounds. For your money, you get the headset, two controllers, a setup guide with warranty information, a rubber nose gasket, a magnetic glasses spacer, a short USB-C to USB-C charging cable, controller wrist straps, and a power adapter. Running through the headset specs quickly, the Pico 4 has two LCD displays, which offer a resolution of 2160 by 2160 pixels per eye, running up to 90 hertz with a field of view of 105 degrees. In front of the LCD panels are these huge pancake lenses. You'll see these are clear and don't have any concentric rings, unlike the Fresnel lenses that are commonly used in most current gen VR headsets. And it's these special pancake lenses that allow for the form factor to be so much smaller. The front of the Pico 4 features five camera sensors, one on each corner for inside out tracking and one in the center behind this glossy front faceplate that provides full color pass through. Powering the headset is the familiar Snapdragon XR2 chipset from Qualcomm, which is paired with 8GB of RAM. I have to say, I just love the look and form factor of this headset. It's so much smaller at the front compared to the Quest 2, and it kind of reminds me of the headset that Wade Watts uses in Ready Player One. In total, the headset with the strap weighs in at around 586 grams, which is around 100 grams lighter than the Quest 2 with an Elite strap installed. The setup process to get the Pico 4 up and running was super easy and took no longer than 10 minutes. The key points to know are that you're gonna need a Wi-Fi connection and you'll also need to create a Pico account. Now, although Pico are owned by ByteDance, the creators of TikTok, you don't need a TikTok account to use this headset. During the setup process, you'll be asked to input your IPD, which is essentially the distance between your eyes. Officially, Pico only list the IPD range between 62 and 72 millimeters, but it can actually go as low as 58 millimeters. Although, if you do set it this low, the headset will warn you that the lenses may pinch the sides of your nose slightly. What's crazy is that once you've input your IPD into the menu, the lenses will actually move themselves into place using tiny motors. It's a bit overkill for something that you'll probably only set once and never touch again, but it's a feature that's been passed down from the upcoming Pico 4 Pro that will support full eye tracking and auto IPD adjustment. One thing that immediately impressed me when using the Pico 4 is the full color pass-through mode. You initially use it to trace your play space and set up your guardian boundary system. But if you enable this toggle in the settings menu, you can simply double tap the side of the headset to activate this color pass-through mode at any time. I found it incredibly useful to find and pick up the controllers, to check my camera was recording okay when making this video, to give my dog a fuss when she was getting bored, and because the headset is slimmer than the Quest 2, you can even use it to grab a quick cup of tea. It's not quite good enough to read text messages from your phone, it's not in 3D, and it's kind of got this fisheye distorted look to it, meaning it probably won't be any good for mixed reality applications like those found on the Quest Pro, for example, but it is a big step up from the Quest 2's black and white pass-through mode. Once I was set up, I jumped straight into some native Pico 4 games. The gameplay I'm showing you here was recorded directly onto the Pico 4 headset using the built-in recording tools. The maximum frame rate for recording is 30 frames per second, so it can look a little bit choppy in this footage, but be rest assured that in the headset it runs at a smooth 72 frames per second. One thing I noticed when comparing the Pico 4 side by side with the Quest 2 is that the Pico 4's displays aren't as bright or as saturated as the Quest 2's display, even after turning the brightness all the way up. 
It's not something that you would really notice unless you had both headsets to compare side by side, but I thought it was worth mentioning. The native Pico 4 game library at launch is pretty limited with After the Fall, Walkabout Mini Golf, and Blade and Sorcery Nomad being the best of the bunch in my opinion. It does lack some of the standout VR titles that are available on Quest 2, such as Beat Saber, Resident Evil 4, Medal of Honor, Population 1, Star Wars, and Bone Lab. And it also lacks support for more experimental content from the likes of SideQuest, as the Pico 4 isn't officially supported right now, although I have been told it will be supported sometime in the future. Pico are working really hard on expanding their game library by working closely with developers and offering as much support as possible to make the transition to Pico a smooth one. It's just going to take some time for their game library to grow a little bit more. With that said, one of my all-time favourite VR games, The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, is coming to the Pico store very soon. Comparing the quality of the native VR game experience between the Pico 4 and the Quest 2, there really isn't much difference other than the brightness that I mentioned. Despite the Pico 4 having a higher resolution and better lenses, native VR games look almost identical between the two headsets. So what about the PC VR game experience, I hear you all ask? Well, this is where things start to get interesting. By default, the Pico 4 is set to run at 72Hz, but in the settings menu, you can increase this to 90Hz. It'll only run up to 90Hz in select native applications, but this is best set for when playing PC VR content. You can connect the Pico 4 to a PC using a link cable, or you can connect to a PC wirelessly if you have a good Wi-Fi connection. The PC VR streaming is compressed in both of these cases, just like it is with the Quest 2. The Pico Neo 3 Link had an uncompressed DisplayPort cable to connect to a PC, but that's not the case with the Pico 4. When playing with a Link cable, the cable will charge your headset at the same time as passing through the data, although it doesn't provide enough power to keep your headset fully charged and the headset battery will slowly decrease over time. Pico do provide a desktop application called the Pico Streaming Assistant, which needs to be installed on your PC and links in directly with Steam VR. Both the official wired and wireless solutions worked in my testing, but even after tweaking the settings, the output quality just wasn't that great. I'm sure this will improve over time, but at the time of this video, I found it to be a bit lacking. The best experience I had playing PC VR content with the Pico 4 was playing wirelessly using virtual desktop, and this application is available now through the Pico Store. The wireless streaming experience was so much better than Pico's own software, and the image quality was noticeably sharper. Even sharper than when using a link cable. When using virtual desktop, you can tweak all the streaming settings whilst in the headset. It's really intuitive to use, and you can easily move from game to game without having to take the headset off. Another really nice bonus of using Virtual Desktop is that you can actually play Oculus PC VR games wirelessly on the Pico 4. And this is how I played Bone Lab for this video that I'm showing you right now. It was in my Oculus PC VR library, and it just works on the Pico 4 when using Virtual Desktop. So I would say if you're interested in the Pico 4 for PC VR content and you have a solid Wi-Fi connection at home, Virtual Desktop is by far the way to go and an essential application in my opinion. So with gaming out of the way, let's talk about comfort. Now as I said earlier, I absolutely love the form factor, but personally I found the foam facial interface at the front to be quite uncomfortable. For me, it put a lot of pressure right on the center of my forehead. Along with this, the foam didn't quite hug the sides of my face enough, leaving two large gaps leaking a lot of light into the headset and directly onto the lenses. As the foam is just held in place using magnets, I really hope a third party like VR Cover makes some replacement facial interfaces for the Pico 4 in the future, as it's by far my biggest gripe with the headset so far. For those that wear glasses in VR, I wore glasses throughout all my testing and I found that there was enough space in the headset to accommodate them without the need of the spacer that's included in the box. There's also an optional rubber nose gasket, which personally I liked having this installed as it just helped to block out any additional light coming in from underneath the headset. So other than the foam, I found the headset to be lightweight and nicely balanced due to having the battery located at the back. In my testing, this internal battery provides around two and a half hours total playtime. If you want to add more battery life to the Pico 4, Bobo do an excellent battery mount, which can be easily fixed into place at the back using Velcro, and this should add another two hours of playtime to the device. I've added a link to the Bobo product in the description down below. 
And this brings me nicely onto the displays and lenses. I mentioned earlier the LCD displays aren't quite as bright as the Quest 2's display, even when turning the brightness all the way up when compared side by side. I just want to reiterate that unless you had both headsets side by side, you probably would never notice. On the flip side, as a result, you do get slightly better black levels in dark games on the Pico 4, whereas the Quest 2 tends to look a little grey at times. Unfortunately, with my Pico 4 review unit, I had a single dead pixel in the right display. I'm not really sure when it happened as I didn't notice it at first, but I will reach out to Pico about this. I just hope it's not a quality assurance issue. Despite the lovely huge pancake lenses being clear, they do still suffer with a bit of glare in contrasting scenes, although it's definitely not as prominent as the glare when using the Quest 2. In my testing when using an application called Test HMD, I found the Pico 4 to have a higher and wider field of view over the Quest 2, and the clarity was much greater. I could clearly read this text from a distance of 5 meters with the Pico 4, but needed to go down to around 3 meters for it to be as clear with the Quest 2. Like most modern VR headsets, screen door effect isn't a problem, but you do get very slight barrel distortion on the far edges of your vision with the Pico 4. Overall though, I was left really impressed with the optics of the Pico 4, particularly when playing PC VR content with virtual desktop, as I felt it was a nice improvement over the Quest 2. Moving on to the Pico 4 controllers. The layout felt instantly familiar as it's essentially the same layout as the Quest 2's touch controllers with the addition of an extra face button on each controller. On the right controller, this additional button is used as a screenshot or recording button, and I did find myself accidentally pushing this a lot whilst playing, but I'm sure with more time with the headset, this wouldn't happen as much. The rumble haptics in these controllers are much more powerful than the Quest 2's, and this is probably why Pico decided to use two AA batteries instead of one. Batteries come pre-installed in each controller and are stated to last up to 80 hours of use. They fit snugly in this nice little battery tray which is designed to keep the batteries in place, even with high velocity hand movements. The tracking rings on these controllers run from the back to the front and kind of curve over the top of your hand. They were designed this way to prevent occlusion when holding the controllers in front of each other, like in first person shooters for example, and in my testing this worked great, although I did find myself knocking the tracking rings from time to time whilst I was getting used to them. The controllers do feature capacitive touch sensors in the thumbsticks and the two main face buttons, which can be used for better hand presence in some VR games. Overall, the controller tracking was pretty solid, although I did have a couple of occasions when the controllers were down by my sides, and one would momentarily lose tracking and then appear in front of my face, but this only happened twice during all the hours of testing that I did, and I'm sure it's something that will be updated and improved over time. So now we're on the home stretch, let's talk about audio. The Pico 4 has speakers built into the head strap arms, which provide a nice off-ear audio solution. You can easily adjust the volume using the volume rocker on the top of the strap's right arm. I would say the built-in audio is just as good, if not slightly better than the Quest 2. One feature that's lacking on the Pico 4 is a 3.5mm audio jack to plug in your own headphones. Thankfully, you can use a USB-C to 3.5mm adapter, like the one that I used here from Ugreen. The only problem is that you can't then use a link cable and a pair of headphones at the same time. I'll add a link to the adapter that I used in the description below. The Pico 4 does have built-in Bluetooth, but when paired with a set of Bluetooth headphones, you get a slight audio delay, making it completely unusable in my opinion. And whilst on the subject of audio, this is what the built-in microphone sounds like. This is a very quick audio test of the Pico 4's built-in microphone. This is what the Quest 2's microphone sounds like for comparison. As of right now, the Pico 4 home software is on version 5.2. Everything is functional, but it just lacks a little bit of polish in my opinion. As the headset wasn't publicly available during my testing, I didn't have the opportunity to test out the friend system or the fitness tracking functionality. But one experimental feature I could test is the Pico 4's hand tracking. It's still very early days, so it's still a little bit buggy, but it does work pretty well to easily navigate the system menu and the Pico store. Pico planned to release this as a fully-fledged feature later this year, along with some hand-tracking compatible games. 
So here's my final conclusion on the Pico 4. Overall, it's a very solid all-round standalone headset that has some really nice features. The small form factor, the high resolution displays, the pancake lenses, the color pass-through, and the controllers are all great. But it does have some drawbacks such as the uncomfortable face cushion, the lack of a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, the small game library, and the system software does need a bit more polish. But what's clear here is that Pico aren't messing around and things are only gonna get better from here. Right now, the headset will only be available in the UK, Europe, and Asia, but it is likely to be available in the US in the future. I would say if you already own a Quest 2 and you only play native standalone content, the Pico 4 isn't worth buying as an upgrade as the standalone gameplay experience is almost identical and you would have to rebuy all your favorite games all over again on the Pico platform. If you already own a Quest 2 and you play PC VR content, the Pico 4 is a nice improvement due to the better field of view, higher resolution and lenses, but it's not a generational leap forward in my opinion to make the purchase really worthwhile. However, if you can't get a Quest 2 because of your region, or you're just looking for a PC VR headset to replace an older generation VR device, then the Pico 4 is absolutely a great choice that offers a lot of value for the price. It's by far and away the best standalone VR headset that I've tried outside the range of Meta devices, and I welcome the competition. I've been seriously impressed with Pico throughout my experience, and I welcome another big player in the VR space. This is their first major release since the backing of ByteDance, and I for one can't wait to see what comes next from them in the future. So that's my Pico 4 review. Apologies, the video is a little bit longer than usual, but hopefully I've covered all the questions you had about this device in the video. If there's anything I've missed, then please feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments down below, and I'll do my very best to answer as many questions as I can. Also, just as a quick heads up, if you've pre-ordered a Pico 4, Pico announced on Twitter this week that there may be some delays with global shipments due to an unprecedented global demand. This obviously sucks for those that have pre-ordered a Pico 4, but at least it is a good sign that the reception from consumers has exceeded Pico's initial expectations. If you did pre-order a headset, I do hope you get your headset soon, and I'd love to know what you all think once you've been able to spend some time with it. If you found this video useful in any way, a cheeky little like on the video would be appreciated. Links to the Pico 4 and all the accessories I've mentioned in this video are listed in the description down below if you need them. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for all my future VR content. And as always, I'll see you all on the next one. <laughs> Cheers.